Good evening. Welcome. I have um, been thinking a lot about what we could possibly say this week in light of everything that's been happening in our country. As many of you know, I chose theater for my life's work in order to celebrate human beings through human stories. Yet what's been laid bare right now is human suffering that we, we have created. <clears throat> Rep is among the countless institutions in this country that have benefited through systems of structural oppression. The sounds of the world right now, the weeping, the rage, the righteous protests are deafening. Talking about theater is tone deaf in the current moment and talking about what is happening in the world from my place of white male privilege is both inappropriate and unnecessary. It is time to center black voices. To that end, we have invited Joe Wilson Jr. Acting company member, one of my dearest friends here tonight to say a few words. Joe is among the most transformative artists I've ever known anywhere. Um, he's been a part of my family since I moved to Providence 15 years ago, and he has the power to inspire. We wanted to lift up Joe's voice tonight. Joseph. Hello, community. Um, first of all, I'd like to start by thanking Trinity Rep for providing me this space to be in conversation with you tonight. Uh, but before I proceed, I have to uh, thank Kirk Columbus, um, our artistic director and my friend, and executive director Tom Parrish, and the entire staff at Trinity Rep for their commitment to sustain our mission. That statement of our covenant to you our community through this very difficult time. They have acted with both grace and generosity, but more importantly, with care and caution. They are committed to never letting the safety of our audiences, our staff, or our audience be, or our artists be compromised. I'd like to also thank the many foundations uh, that continue to support Trinity Rep, but more importantly, our patrons. Your generosity will continue to be critical in the survival of the creative arts as we know it today in our community. Now, when I say as we know it, trust me, I'm not being naive. There will be a new normal, a safer normal, a better normal, as I hope someday we'll find a vaccine and a cure for COVID-19 I am hopeful and I'm also demanding that there be a more inclusive normal, a more equitable normal, a more just normal. The normal that I see in our future must be one that is free from the scourge. That 400 year old pandemic that has been infecting this country that has and continues to travel through time, ever-changing, evolving, adapting, embedding, constantly assuming some new insidious and destructive form. That is to say, y'all, we all know racism ain't new. It's to say that racism has been a cancer in the body of America that exists as a critical component of this country's origin story that started with the removal, the brutal removal 
of our native brethren off of this land and the subjugation of countless African-Americans to slavery and the grips of Jim Crow. But even though these events seem far in the past, they continue to hold a grip, a systematic need on the necks of black Americans. We are in an all out war waged by that other great and enduring pandemic of systematic racism and white supremacy. Now, I wanna be clear, um, please don't interpret my being here tonight with my dear friend on Trinity Webb's Facebook page as me representing my institution or an institution. I am not, and I cannot be a representative of my beloved institution at this time. Not this time. I am a member of the black community. I am here as a fellow American and I will not take on my beloved theater's labor. That is not my responsibility. That work is not mine. I will continue to hold this institution to its shared values, company, community, and education. Numbers and money cannot justify our existence. You know, one of my biggest fears is that COVID-19 and the economic destruction that will be sure to follow that ours and other institutions would suffer setbacks in terms of the great work that has been done by ours and theaters across the country to become more equitable, diverse, and inclusive spaces. What those tapes that came out of Minneapolis reveal, again, because George Floyd is not the first, is that we have to double down on being better, doing better, and inspiring others to be better. We cannot downsize in pursuit of justice. COVID-19 laid bare the, continuous, the continual subjugation of the poor and the vulnerabilities of communities under constant cult by generations of systematic oppression, suppression, and neglect. And it's not so much about what those tapes of that man being murdered reveal. It's about what those tapes of that man being murdered reflected. And the question still remains if and how they reflect you. Finally, to my black brothers and sisters, I too am tired, I too am angry. I too am frustrated, confused. I too have a reaction when I see the police and I too get scared. I too wonder when and how we somehow grow out of being a cute little black boy to being a threat. I too marvel at their call for a peaceful protest. And so we kneel then when we kneel, they call into question our allegiance and destroy our careers. I too want to see something burn. I too see how they value objects and ideals over bodies and their good conscience. And white people, I'm here to tell you, I too want to see destruction. I want to feel the same rush of adrenaline, that momentary feeling of power over the forces that seek to destroy us. I too want to be seen, really seen and heard. But community, I too am hopeful. Through activism, advocacy, and policy, this community, this nation can be better. I too demand that we all do better. I am grateful to those shoulders of, of justice upon which I stand. I too believe that we have come this far and we ain't going back now. Community, I'm grateful for you. 
I'm inspired by you. And I am yours in peace and love and solidarity. Thank y'all. And now we would like to take eight minutes and 46 seconds of silence together to hold space for our black family and for all of our family members of color who are experiencing ongoing loss and pain and a daily sense of overwhelming danger. <clears throat> Eight minutes and 46 seconds is how long it took for George Floyd to be choked to death. It is a long time. I would ask you uh, to stay with us for that entire time to observe this silence.
Thank you all very much for being with us. Oh, there you go, Joey. There you are. Go ahead. Hey, everybody. Thank you so much for being with us. Um, let's take care of each other. Let's be strong. We have a lot of work to do. I love you. And once again, thank you, Kurt. Um, thank you, Trinity Rep, for being my family and uh, for being a very important part of our community. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Love you, Joey. Love you all. Love you.